What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always guys, we're going to be breaking down the overall markets, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about what I did today on the 21st of August in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading on to the rest of this month in August and heading into the month of September. September in 2019 and we're also going to be talking about a couple of struggles that I've been facing recently in terms of my trading. I'm going to be real with you guys so stay tuned a couple of minutes into this video I'm going to be getting into that. So if you guys enjoy the video here feel free to go down below hit that like button consider joining our discord group chat and our Facebook group all of those links are down below in the description box and let's get right into it guys. So today the S&P 500 had a very good day. It was up $23.92 here at the close, up 0.82%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average had a very good day, up 240 points, up 0.93%. And the tech heavy NASDAQ, guys, you can see it's currently up about $7.75. That's not the closing price. Let me quickly pull up my Yahoo Finance app so I can tell you guys exactly where we closed. We closed up 71 points, up 0.9%. And the up $7 that you guys are seeing right now, this is what it's up after hours. So after hours, um, you know, the futures are trending up, which is a good sign that the markets are still pushing green here. So overall, guys, the markets today did very, very well. If we break down some technicals on the S&P, we're really at that same point in time, or that same point, rather, that resistance that we've been talking about here over the past couple of videos, um, you know, on the S&P. And you guys can clearly see, you know, we're under that 50 simple moving average resistance, and we're at that level at 2930, which at this point, this is the fourth time that we have been showing resistance at at that level. You guys can see back on the 8th of August, back on the 13th of August, a couple of days ago in the beginning of this week, on the 19th of August, and today, guys, we've been struggling at that level. We haven't broken out which if we do break out, that would be very, very bullish. We've honestly just been struggling there. And if we go a bit closer to the 20-day, one hour, you guys can see it even better. Today, we actually had a, a kind of a similar day to what we had on Monday, right? This was on Monday. Yeah, the 19th of August. And let me explain to you guys what I mean by that. If we go a bit closer, you can see on Monday, we had a gap up and we had a very strong uh, uh, a struggle, a very difficult time breaking out of 2930, the gap up and the strong resistance. Then we gapped down yesterday, we saw a bit of a sell-off, right? And we had a very similar scenario to Monday today, where we gapped up, and yet again, we saw that resistance. So, all in all, guys, at this point, for the S&P to break out and maybe see another run of a couple of days, maybe even get back to $3,000, we need to see the break above 2930, and we need to see that level hold as a support and ultimately break out of this 50 SMA resistance, which is clearly a resistance here on the four-hour chart. And at that point, you know, we may be testing 2950, which at this point is going to be the next resistance that we are seeing here. That would be the first one we'd be facing if we break out of that 50 SMA. But let's say on the flip side, tomorrow we dump, we get rejected. This could be a very, very good opportunity to go short, maybe play some of these market ETFs that go up whenever the overall markets are going up, like SPXS, which goes up three times what the S&P is going down. So let's say the S&P dumped 2% tomorrow. We had a very bad day. The SPXS ETF is going to be up 6%, right? That's kind of how that works. And if we go over here, you know, to the NASDAQ, you know, you guys can see we're also trending under resistance as, as well. It's not the 50 SMA like on the S&P. It's actually under the 180 SMA, which is this gold line that you guys are seeing. And we're also approaching another resistance, which we were at on the 13th of August at about 77.60, 77.65. And we also topped off at that, at that point back on the 19th of August, which was this Monday, two days ago, two days prior to me 
recording this video. So, guys, all in all, if we break out of this 180 SMA, we break into, let's say, you know, 77, 90, 7,800, that's going to be a very bullish move on the NASDAQ, and we could potentially play at that point TQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up at a 3x rate, right? These are options that you have, and me personally, I usually play these all the time when the markets are volatile, when we're going up 2% one day, down 2% the next day. I'm playing these all the time because they offer a lot of potential when the markets are either spiking up or spiking down on any particular day, right? So if we go back to that NASDAQ and if we go back to that 20-day or to the 20-day one-hour chart, you guys can see on a closer basis what I'm seeing here, right? Very clear resistance right here. If we do get that breakout on the 184 hour, we're going to be breaking out of that 180 SMA resistance. We could potentially be headed back up to 7,800, 7,900, maybe all the way up to $8,000. But before we do get all crazy and say we're going to all time highs again, we need to see that breakout. And to be honest, guys, I'm not convinced that we are going to go to all time highs whatsoever, right? Maybe if we get a Fed rate cut in September. You know, if we get a 25 basis point, 50 basis point rate cut, we may be going to all-time highs again on the short-term fix, which a, sh a rate cut is a short-term fix. You know, the, the market might take this very positively and spike up um, the markets in general like we did see when we got the hint of a rate cut, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago and the markets hit those all-time highs. I know you all remember that. So let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you can clearly see we're trending under both. Both the 180 and the 50 SMA here on the four hour chart. We're nearing a resistance where we got hit once, twice over the past couple of weeks. On Monday, we got hit at this point as well. I guess we're kind of trading above that level, but still we're trending under the 180, the 50, and these two previous points on the 8th and uh, from the 8th and the 13th of August. So, very obvious here, guys. If we break out, that's going to be bullish on the on the Dow Jones. Let's say we get rejected here tomorrow. We do something like this. That's not going to be too good on a technical basis. We may be selling off a bit more there on the Dow. And honestly, guys, there's not much more to say about these technicals, right? We're at a point where we're either going to be at a bullish point or a bearish point based on what the price um, action is looking like tomorrow, maybe the next day, or heading into next week, right? You know, this is going to be very very, very important, especially taking a look at the futures on Sunday that open at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, where they're gapping up or gapping down. If they're gapping up or gapping down, that's going to show us and give us a sign of maybe the markets are going to push green on Monday next week, heading into the rest of the week, or maybe the markets are going to gap down and we might see some blood you know, in the markets in the next week. So very, very important, guys, to keep a look at those futures after after hours, you know, Sunday especially, planning for the upcoming week, and after hours every single day to plan for the following day, right? It's very, very important. That's what I personally do, and a lot of people in the Strive Smart community do that as well, guys. A lot of traders and a lot of investors use futures to their benefit. So, Guys, that's pretty much it for the markets right now, right? We saw a gap up in all of the indexes today saw a gap up like we saw on Monday and we had a bit of a struggle at the points on all you know at these high levels that we hit today we didn't really break out we saw uh, you know a bunch of resistance on these points or at these points for all of the indexes as you guys can clearly see right here so I'd love to know down below in the comments section what do you guys think about the markets right now you know are we breaking out to all-time highs again do you think this is all just you know you, you know uh, all um a fake rally here that we are seeing. I would love to know what you guys have to think. Don't be shy. Drop a comment down below. So, guys, let's quickly talk about, you know, I like you guys saw in the title, you know, I've I've kind of been struggling in terms of executing trades 
like I used to before my vacation. And I love vacations, guys. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like every time that I go on a vacation, whether it's a week, a couple of days, you know, I get off of my groove. I get, you know, shaken out of my rhythm in terms of trading and honestly, all of my day-to-day tasks. And for those of you guys that have no idea, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, Uh, You know, uh, I got back from Greece like a couple days ago. I think it was like on the 16th or the 17th, but I was in Greece for three weeks, guys. And when I was there, you know, the market was opening at like 5 p.m. My internet was terrible, right? I was trying my best to execute trades and to find patterns and to kind of, you know, find setups that I personally like. But I was striking out, guys. I'll be completely honest with you all. I was hitting some good trades, but I was not getting into my groove the way that I typically do when I'm at home, when I'm at my desk, when I'm in my location that I really am used to being at. And honestly, I'm getting, I'm trying to get adapted to being back. I'm trying to adapt to being back in my environment here. And honestly, Uh, I think it was like Monday I didn't trade, yesterday I had a little trade, Um, today I, I was trying to get this SPXS move, it didn't pan out to the way I wanted to, honestly I haven't been seeing too many setups and I'm in my head right now guys, I'll be completely honest with you all and I'm sure a lot of you realize this in your own trading, you've been through this in your own trading where you hit winning streaks, then you get into a funk whether you go on vacation, whether you, you know, hit a couple of losing trades, whatever it may be, but this is all part of the game, right? This is all part of trading. You're not always going to be on a winning streak. You're not always going to be hitting your setups the way you like them. You're not always going to be executing trades. There's going to be things that are throwing you off of your track, right? Throwing you off track, and that's just honestly where I am right now. A lot of this channel, my personal channel that you're watching right now, you know, this is me documenting my journey. It's not just me you know, talking about charts, whatever. Of course, I'm here to provide value, education for everybody out there, but I'm also here to provide my personal experience and my documentation of my journey in the stock market, trading and investing, personal finance tips, all those different things. So you guys can maybe gain some value. Maybe you can relate to what I'm personally going through, um, you know, in the moment. So right now, Honestly, guys, I'm struggling a bit. I haven't been doing too well, and I think this is going to go, uh, it's going to pass on, you know, in a couple of days here once I do get back in my groove, but I figured I'd let you guys know I'm all about being transparent, and that's just the truth right now, guys. So anyway, now that I got that out of the way, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, and again, drop a comment, let me know what you guys think about that. Let's talk about um, what I ended up doing today, and honestly, another day that really wasn't that great, to be honest with you all, right? I got into SPXS earlier today because I was thinking the theory behind this trade was the market was, or rather the S&P was at that resistance at 29.30, right? We were seeing a strong resistance in the first couple of hours in the market. I believe I did get in right around here. So the first hour in the market, you know, I started to see, um, you know, a bit of a resistance on the S&P. We got the gap up. We got the dump here. I believe this is where I entered. And I was like, okay, the markets hit the resistance at 2930. We're starting to dump here. Let me build a position just in case the market does take a hit. Because remember, when the S&P is going down, SPXS is going up, right? So I started to build the SPXS position at around like 1015, 1030 Eastern Standard Time. If we go back to the uh, uh, SPXS ETF here, it was on this dip, I believe. I got in at about $18.30, $18.32. We popped up to about $18.39, $18.40. And my, uh, my ideology behind this trade was to give it a bit of wiggle room, right? I was going to cut losses if the S&P was to break out of 2930, which you guys can clearly see it never did, right? But it never dumped either. So I was in a point, I was at, I was caught in a trade where I was pretty much at break even for the entire day, right? I set an OCO order on it and one cancels the other order on it because I was running some errands and honestly, it didn't really do anything, right? I got in again at 1830. 
We went down to 1824. My stop was obviously a bit lower than that because I, I, let, I gave it some wiggle room. I wanted to give it a stop of, I think it was at about 1, 1 1.2% on this particular trade. And we didn't break out either, right? I ended up coming back, um, you know, to my computer. None of the orders were hit. You know, none of the, uh, the stop order or the limit sell. It wasn't hit, neither of those. And really, guys, I ended up just selling out literally for like a point. 2.3% profit, nothing much, right? I'm grateful for the profit, but again, I'm kind of in my head. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm typically taking, you know, 0.5% at least. And today, it was another one of those days where I just got a 0.2. Again, I'm grateful. I'm not complaining whatsoever. Profit is profit. I'm very happy that I didn't make profit. But when you trade and you, you know, get a 1% gain one day, you know, the next day you get a 0.1, it kind of messes with you a little bit. I don't know if I'm being like ungrateful for that or whatever, but again, I'm just being completely honest with you guys um, in terms of that. So again, that's really it, guys. You know, 1830, nothing really happened. I was expecting the markers to dump, you know, maybe do something like we saw yesterday on SPXS. If you were to buy the dip, you know, you wrote it up, you would have made a 1%, 2% profit. That's what I was hoping for, but we didn't get that. Ended up, you know, just selling out really at just break even. And honestly, 0.2, really minimal profit. But again, I'm not complaining, right? I'm not complaining. I'm just documenting my journey here. But I did enter into another little position here on ATVI at V Activision Blizzard and or Blizzard, I said Blizzard Blizzard right Activision Blizzard oh my god I said it again <laughs> but Activision Blizzard this is a stock that I've been talking about on and off here on the channel and we actually got a technical break today that I wanted right we got the break out of forty eight dollars which has been a resistance over the past couple of months it's very very obvious here right we got that break and notice how every time, pretty much every time, almost, we've broken out of $48, we've rode up to at least 50 or even tested that 5130 level resistance at the top of this channel. So really short story here, guys, uh, to really talk or say it quick. The whole idea of this trade is to fill the gap up to $51 at least or $51.50. And swing trading, guys, I'm scaling into my positions very, very slowly. I'll link a video down below where I go in-depth on my swing trading strategy, part of my swing trading strategy. But... The gist of it is I scale in with 10-15% to mitigate my risk just in case the position doesn't go my way. And that's exactly what I ended up doing here. And the idea is, again, to scale up, sell at $51, $51.50, and cut losses if we break below this support at around $48.50 to about $48-ish. So right now, I'm swinging at the... Took a little uh, day trade today on SPXS, nothing much, and that's pretty much all I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. So let's talk about very quickly some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, and very quickly, let's talk about some retail stocks, guys. Today, retail did ridiculous. Target was up 20% today, 20%, absolutely amazing. If we go here and take a look at their earnings, I'm not sure if I can show you guys here. There is a lot of news for, um, you know, Target today. Okay, EPS, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, obviously they beat on EPS and revenue. That's pretty much all you need to know, um, you know, for the, for the gist of their earnings. And the stock went bananas, right? Another one that went bananas was Lowe's, guys. Lowe's went up 11%. And another one after hours they reported earnings was Nordstrom. I forget their ticker. I think it's like, what is it, like JN? Or yeah, that's what it is, uh, JWM. This one's currently up 5% right now. And after hours, you guys can see that massive spike. So 5% was, I think, the move that it saw throughout the trading day. And then after hours, it's up, I think, like 10 11% from what I checked on my Yahoo Finance app before recording this video. So that's a total of about a 17% move, right? So retail right now, guys, 
I haven't seen these types of moves in retail in a while, and this is pretty, pretty impressive in some of these stocks. So I'm interested in seeing, not so much in uh, Nordstrom here, but in Lowe's and Target. You know, I'm interested in seeing, especially Lowe's here, are we going to hold this 108 level as a new support and maybe start to trend back up and hit that high at 118? This is something that I'm watching here over these next couple of days. Target, it's already at this all-time high here, so this is a bit more tricky because we don't have previous price data to judge a new support. Um, uh, in terms of targets, so I would love to see, is this going to cool off? Are people going to take profits? Is it going to continue to run? This is something that I'm personally thinking about with Target right now. So retail, those three, I'm definitely watching those tomorrow for the continue, uh, the continued momentum, potentially for them to continue to break out. Um, I'm watching those. And yesterday I talked about marijuana stocks, in particular CGC and Cron. Although the charts, they're looking very very ugly, they are reaching, especially CGC here, they're reaching levels of old support, right? Old support on CGC, if we get a bit further here on the three-year chart, you can see it's at about $24 to $25. And CGC, as well as Cron, the marijuana stocks in general, I feel like, have been getting crushed, right? So once I think they break out, I think they're going to run, especially if we get a good earnings report, solid news come out uh, in terms of these companies. This is going to be a point in time where, um, you know, they can definitely do well. And especially if we break out of these moving average resistance the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, um, you know, this could definitely run, especially if hype starts to build back up, um, you know, in terms of the overall uh, marijuana stocks in general, CGC and Cron, right? So these are a couple that I'm being very patient with because the charts, again, they're not looking too attractive, but once we do get that breakout, I think they're going to be a very high reward, um, you know, potential swing trade, and that's honestly what I'm waiting for, um, you know, very patiently. I'm waiting for the opportunity to open up, but I figured I'd let you guys know um, about those. So that's honestly really what I'm watching heading into tomorrow. I want to see the continuation retail these marijuana stocks at V. Of course, these market ETFs, if we do end up getting rejected, you know, on the S&P, maybe on the NASDAQ under these moving averages, there could be a lot of opportunity in some of these short ETFs like SQQQ and SPX. S. So that's it for today's video, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you did enjoy it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And let me know some of the challenges that you have faced trading. Have you gone, if you gotten into trading slumps like I'm personally in right now, I would love to know. Don't feel shy. Let me know down below in the comment section and join our Discord chat. Facebook group, all of those are linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate you guys watching so much. Peace out.